Junkers 87B dive bomber, commonly known as the Stuka, is one of the most easily identified German aircraft. It has a range of approximately 500 miles. Designed and used strictly as a dive bomber, it has been an important factor in German successes. Its normal tactics are to dive down from 10,000 feet and release its bombs at two or 3,000 feet. It carries its bombs between the landing gear and under the wing. The Stuka disrupts supply lines, troop concentrations, and has led attacks on fortifications and harbors. Ships which can be reached from land bases have been bombed repeatedly by Stukas. From the front, the decided kink of the wings and fixed landing gear are the outstanding features. From below, the Stuka can be spotted by its narrow tipped wings and rectangular stabilizer. When looking at the airplane broadside, notice the canopy forms a hump on the fuselage while the underside is straight. The rudder assembly has distinctive straight lines. From above, the Stuka can again be spotted by its narrow tipped wings and rectangular stabilizer. The Stuka can climb better than 1,500 feet a minute. It reaches 14,000 feet in nine minutes and can make 242 miles per hour at this height. The armor is placed here and here to protect the rear gunner. The pilot sits in an armored seat. The armament includes two fixed outboard wing guns firing forward. There is also one flexible gun in the rear cockpit. All three guns are 7.9 millimeter, similar to our 30 caliber. These bombers rely on fighter escorts until their bombs are dropped. Then being more maneuverable, they will turn and fight, trying to bring their front guns into play against attackers. You can always tell a Stuka by the distinctive kink in the wing, the fixed landing gear, the tapered wings, the rectangular stabilizer, the humped back and angular tail fin. Also remember that the Italians have their own version of the Stuka. It's the Breda 201. German or Italian, it's an enemy. The Junkers 88 has several uses, the latest being that of a long-range fighter. Stuka dive bombing successes caused the designers first to change the Ju-88 to a dive bomber. The Ju-88 has a glass nose like this, except the long-range fighter which has a solid armored nose. All models of the Ju-88 have a low wing retractable landing gear, and two liquid-cooled motors. Circular radiators, however, give the engines an air-cooled appearance. The Ju-88 carries a bomb load of two to 3,000 pounds and a crew of three or four. The outstanding features of the Ju-88 from a head-on view are the underslung engines and on the bomber models, the bomb racks between the engines. From below, the jutting engines of the Ju-88 are quite apparent. Notice the nearly perfect alignment of the nose and engines and the angular wings. Remember Ju as meaning jutting. Notice that from a side view, the jutting engines and the large cockpit give it a nose-heavy appearance. Again, observe the motors nearly even with the nose and the long, slim fuselage. From above, notice the jutting engines, the angular wings, and the forward placement of the cockpit. 
there is not much chance of confusing the Ju-88 with an American bomber. Compare it with our North American B-25 on the bottom. The Ju-88 has a low wing, and the B-25 a mid wing. Also, the Ju-88 has a single fin, whereas the B-25 has twin fins. Notice the nose-heavy appearance of the Ju-88 in contrast to the long nose of the B-25. Most American twin-engine bombers have the engines set well behind the nose. From below, the jutting engines of the Ju-88 are in direct contrast to the long nose of the B-25. The Ju-88's angular wing differs markedly from our bombers. The Ju-88 can climb more than 2,000 feet a minute. At 15,000 feet, it has a top speed of 300 miles per hour. Its range is about 1,500 miles. Armor is placed around the two pilot's seats and in the rear and bottom sections of the cockpit. All airplanes of this type shot down were found to have leak-proof oil and gasoline tanks. The placement of the guns differs in the various versions of the Ju-88. Bomber models usually have a forward gun, twin guns in the upper rear of the canopy, and a gun in the bottom of the fuselage firing to the rear. The rear gunner may also shoot to the right using a beam gun. By carrying this gun to the left of the fuselage, he can also shoot to the left. The co-pilot has a flexible gun in the front, but sometimes this gun is locked in position and is aimed by maneuvering the airplane. All guns on the bomber are 7.9 millimeter, roughly equivalent to our 30 caliber. However, the newer fighter models have one 15 millimeter machine gun and three 7.9 millimeter machine guns in the nose firing forward. The 15 millimeter gun is slightly larger than our 50 caliber and fires 1,000 rounds per minute. Protection to the rear is given by guns in the top rear and one in the bottom rear. The Ju-88 is the most formidable of Nazi airplanes. To spot it, look for underslung engines and bomb racks the alignment of the nose and engines, the angular wings, the nose-heavy jutting appearance, and the slim fuselage. We should have no trouble distinguishing the three airplanes we have been discussing. Close up, they should be easily recognized. Did you pick them right? Let's try again, just to be sure. See if your answers check with these. If they do, junk the junkers.